Hi! In this video, we're going to follow this tutorial so that we can learn how to detect tissue on our images. So as before, I'm going to pop this to my other monitor, open up QPath and try this out in different images. Okay, so what does this say? Why do I need to know this? So thresholding may become one of the QPath commands that you use most often. It provides a way to define regions of interest without needing to manually annotate everything. Okay, so the first step would be to learn how to do it manually, I think. And for that, we would probably use the wand and annotate tissue. Obviously, the resolution you're doing this in will affect the level of detail with which you're doing it, as you can see. So you can do it like this, you can do it, you can do it with, in very low resolution. But bear in mind that when you increase resolution, you will have a lot of mistakes, or you can do it directly in high resolution which is kind of hard to do, actually, not very fun. Slow and painful. Oof, no, I don't like this. So if we want to avoid having to do this manually, we need to learn how to apply pixel classification. So I'm going to delete the annotations, because I don't really want them. And we're going to do this using pixel classification. Okay, so for that we need to do classify pixel classification and then create thresholder. And here we get the resolution we want to do this on. So I guess that the higher the resolution, the slower it will be, but obviously the more detailed. The channel we want to use for the thresholding, if we want to do some filtering, and yeah the classification so let's say that above threshold is going to be region and below threshold ignore okay and then we have this slider here that we can use for visualization so this is an h and e we have these talents to choose from we have the automatically Deconvoluted channels, the red, green, and blue, the average, the max, and the min. You know what? First, I'm going to check these channels and see which one may be more helpful. Hmm, maybe. But you still get a lot of things in the background. Green might be useful. Let's try green. And then since we can in the lower right corner see the values of green, let's just say it's a hundred and something, and then two hundred and forty-four for the background, two hundred and nineteen for these little pesky things. Okay, let's do two hundred and twenty. And we need to turn this back on. Um Ah, if we double click here, we can switch the classes. Sounds useful. Back again. That's not too great. We can go down, go up. Let's do a bit of filtering first. Ah. If we do this, we get rid of a lot of bad stuff in the background, but we lose definition here. But what if I do this and at the same time, I increase the resolution, then it works much better. Go style by tell. Oh, but then we end up with little things again. This is not terrible. What if I did? Oh, that's better. Yeah, you could play around with this for a while, trying different ones. Blue seems to work quite well too. Okay, and what I wanted to do is that if you save this um, class test, if you save it, 
then you can use this. But especially then you have this workflow. And in this, and I want to do the exact same thing on the other image that has um, a different color appearance to see if the same classifier would work. Then I can click create objects, full image, okay. Annotation, and I can split the objects. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think I tried to go into too much detail, and I just wanted to detect the objects. So I'm going to try this again. Okay, now I have a much broader classification, so I think it should be okay. I should be able to get um, the annotated objects. So let's create the objects. And I get a lot of weird regions. Well, now I have a workflow here and I can create a script. Okay, so we will learn more about um, scripting further on, but I really want to use this to try and do the same thing on the other image that has a very different color appearance and see if the results are the same. So I'm going to open the Hamamatsu and click run. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work because I said that doesn't work because I'm saying that the threshold is with the green 220 value and region is whatever is below 220 and apparently everything is below 220 in the green channel for this image. So yeah, another proof that different color profiles are dangerous when analyzing images in batches. Let's go back to our one and I guess that now I could delete the annotations that I don't need, like this one. This one I do need. Oh, maybe I, I should just click on them and delete. I can merge them as well. Where is this one? Okay, so now I have different annotations for each of the pieces of tissue that I have in this image. So yeah, that's how we detect tissue in QPath. Hope you learned something. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye!